bill in the Massachusetts uh, legislature that is trying to get passed. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Thank you for having us uh, for a little bit of your meeting today. I'm Norma with Oakley Home Access and joining me is Sydney Erickson. She's down in our main office in Narragansett and she is the uh, real expert who can speak about the history of the Rhode Island Livable Home Modification Grant and how that has worked out for uh, residents of Rhode Island and why we're trying to get it happening here in Massachusetts. Um, those of you who I don't know, I noticed are actually all also in the home accessibility and modification area. So this should be of um, special interest to you because it will make it a lot easier for you to bring the services and products to people in your catchment area who may not have the financial resources to pay for it privately. Um, as we all know, it's not something that Medicare or MassHealth will cover or any private insurance. Um, most people don't have long term care insurance and there are a significant number of lower income people who just don't have the means to um, to cover these kind of modifications or equipment independently. Um, the grant in Rhode Island was started in 2019 and to date over 500 families who have a mobility impaired family member have used that grant to make necessary changes to make their home safe and accessible uh, for that person or people. Sydney, I would like to uh, call in to jump in and just talk a little bit how what she sees happening in the office um, when somebody calls and has a question about the grant or wants to book an assessment for home modifications and and then is asking about how much things cost and how am I going to pay for this? And um, then I'll get back to what we are doing here in Massachusetts to try to bring us up to speed in this very important issue. Over to Sydney. Hello, everyone. Um, so the Rhode Island Livable Home Modification Grant Program, it's a little bit of a mouthful, works as a reimbursement program. So it allows, um, the way it's set in Rhode Island is families with no dependents, so obviously different um, thresholds for, you know, each tax filing um, status. So families with no dependents um, underneath $78,000 a year with income are able to apply and be approved for this grant. Um, they have this stipulation where if you are not approved yet, you can't have the items installed. However, they recognize the need for this equipment. So they understand um, anyone who's being discharged home from a hospital or a facility it is overridden on that clause and you can have the items installed immediately, as well as if you're home and cannot get out to your doctor's appointments or the grocery store or just out in the community to do normal everyday activities, they override that clause as well. So they provide numerous opportunities to act on urgency and you know, help the individuals of the population within Rhode Island to get the items that they need in their home. And they cover um, you know, all of our equipment ranging from grab bars and ramps to stair lifts to a backup generator that's gonna power the individual's you know, equipment when they lose power to um, you know, accessible light switches. You know, if you were, anything you could think of, they're gonna cover and anything that you are not sure that's gonna be covered, a simple call into the state, they, you know, will put in a review so that they can, you know, get the items covered underneath their grant, recognizing that everyone has different needs. Um, so interestingly enough, you know, a client that I have recently needs a sling and, you know, not normally covered underneath a grant, um, but it's an item that they need for other equipment and it's just right outside their price range. So the grant said, you know what, submit it over for a review and, and we'll see how we can help them. Um, so as of last year, in the state of Rhode Island, um, the grant paid out just under $960,000 for reimbursement um, to patients throughout the entire state for the modifications they made to their home. The home modification cost total, so including what uh, patients had paid, was over $2 million. So just to get a, your head kind of wrapped around how big this program really is and how much it's really bringing in, um, the clients are now able to look at the any sort of equipment and rather it be, you know, even that $500 is now, okay, I know at the end of the day, I'll be paying only $250 and the same goes for that $5,000 ramp. So it really allows individuals of, of all populations and backgrounds to get all of the equipment that they need and in the timely manner as well. So when Oakley started to come over into Massachusetts and work here and I came on board with them and found out about this grant program in Rhode Island, um, Massachusetts being so much larger 
geographically and population wise, you can imagine that exponentially there are a lot more people with needs similar to, to that um, demographic in Rhode Island. And uh, there is no one single central grant program for here in Massachusetts. There are interest free loans that people can access through the um, Mass. Um, Commission on Disabilities, uh, each city and town has its own disabilities and veterans outreach and things like that, where there's, there is a lot of funding and interest-free loans available, but no one central grant program like what is working so well for Rhode Island. Um, my local state rep here in Taunton is a woman named Carol Doherty and uh, her postcard when she was running for office back in the fall had a lot on it about what an advocate she is for people with disabilities. So I voted for her and she won. And then I reached out to her and said, you know, put up, let me see what you got. So uh, I asked her if Justin and I could have a meeting with her and she was generous enough to give us about an hour of her time on Zoom back in November. And Justin Oakley, who is an occupational therapist and one of the owners of Oakley Home Access was able to hammer home all these points about the Rhode Island Home Grant, how it was started, how Oakley in Rhode Island has worked to keep it funded um, each year when it comes up for review in the state budget. Uh, we've helped out with uh, spreading the word about that and getting support for it and asked if could we think about how something like this would work in Massachusetts and she said thanks for all the info this is awesome I gotta go and then we were like well at least she gave us her time um, out of Almost nowhere about a month ago, Justin and I got an email from Carol Doherty saying, I wrote the bill, I'm presenting it to the State House Legislature tomorrow. Let me know if I need to change any wording. Um, she has basically taken the Rhode Island existing home modification grant that's in place, written a bill called HD 2507 that mirrors it, again, reflecting the larger land and larger population of Massachusetts, um, it has been presented to the legislatures and will be voted on. I'm not exactly sure when, but in the meantime, all your state legislators know that this exists. It's HD 2507 and I've put all the information in the chat. So please take a look, take that link, click on it, copy it, use the link that tells you how to find your state representative and gives you their email we wrote a template all you do is fill in your name where you live ask them to support it put your name on it send it along and then if you would share that link with all your personal professional and social contacts um, this is something that will benefit an untold number of people in massachusetts and in turn allow people to remain at home rather than require them to move to most likely a Medicaid funded uh, long term care facility. So the, the financial benefits are, are long term and not immediate, but this is a case of being proactive and spending money to save a lot more money in the long run, which isn't always the easiest thing to get through to a politician. Um, so I hope you'll take that uh, with it, run with that ball. If you have any questions or need any more information about the Rhode Island grant or the bill itself, my contact information is in the chat and I would be happy to send that along. Um, we're just here to ask you all as those who work with, work for, and advocate for aging in place, quality of life, um, and more dignity and mobility for our people with disabilities in Massachusetts. This is a really important piece of legislation that really has no downsides for anybody, but uh, they need to vote for it. When, it. when it does come up for a vote, Justin will be asked to speak um, via Zoom to the Mass State Legislature about Rhode Island and how that could be applied here in Mass. Uh, I think I've taken up enough time. If Ryan says people can ask me questions, we are happy to answer them. If not, we'll let you carry on. We certainly have some time. So if there are questions for uh, Norma or Sydney, please feel free to ask them. My only, my biggest question was something that you answered, but um, are there, with, with Rhode Island, for example, uh, has there been any analysis done in the terms of the amount of money that's been saved by having uh, having that versus not having something because you have two states that are right next to each other that can be a, basically a comparison of one with and one without. I mean, there there is definitely a, a lot of 
insight into that. As far as a hard dollar number, it's kind of impossible to say because you can say, you know, Mrs. So-and-so got these modifications and if she hadn't gotten them, her condition might have required this and then she might have fallen. You can never factor in how many, you know, 911 calls, ambulance transports, ED stays, observation stays, surgeries, hospitalizations and rehab stays were necessarily prevented by somebody getting just a grab bar. Um, you can kind of expound upon that in your brain. It would certainly be in the very high hundreds of thousands, if not millions per year by this point, if you consider what a month stay in a long-term care facility is that Medicaid may be covering for, let's even say half of the 500 people who have used the grant if they've um, paid out $500,000 a year and 250 of those people spent a year in a care facility at the cost of three to $8,000 a month each. Um, again, it's been in place there for about three years. So uh, as a wild guess, there, there's no real hard data because you can't, you can't say what you saved by preventing. You don't know exactly what you prevented, but we've certainly prevented a lot of falls and 911 calls. And I don't mean we Oakley, I mean the state of Rhode Island has just created safer environments for so many people that it only stands to reason that many injuries, hospital stays, rehab stays, surgeries, emergency response uh, was prevented just by virtue of preventing falls in general, that's everybody's top priority in any, uh, any part of our business. So uh, it would definitely meet or exceed what was spent per year. Uh, I'm sure it would pay for itself more than enough after one year in place. Yeah, I, I agree. It's it's. Oh, go ahead, Evangeline. Oh, no, I was just gonna ask, uh, between the Rhode Island bill and the Mass bill, are there any, um, um, differences are the exactly the same bill. Um, I believe that the dollar amount that she's asking for that Carol Doherty presented in her in her uh, text of the bill is the same um, in her proposed bill. Again, I think the funding might become a separate vote rather than the, you know we'll yes we'll create this grant now we'll figure out what the monetary value of the grant will be and how much we can and and that that may be the more tough not to crack in this case. Uh, wording as far as what people, what it does, what people can use it for, what criteria they would need to qualify for it, I believe is identical or very close to identical with maybe a few slight changes to reflect Massachusetts, but I think the income limit, which is certainly not a very restrictive um, and, uh, and those criteria have remained identical to Rhode Island um, just because it has worked so well there and she, took the information that Justin gave her and researched it and, and thought that would make a acceptable, viable presentation here for Massachusetts residents as well. Thank you. So, I mean, for those of you who do this or, you know, or in the home care side and you just think about when people call you for something that they need and if we can't get this, we really have to think about relocating to, you know, a, a care community of some kind. I, these are people who you can point to this grant and say, actually, if your income meets this, it, uh, Sydney can speak a little bit about what the application process is like. It's not terribly daunting. She assists people with it frequently or often they have, you know, a social worker in their care circle who's helping them, whether it's through a VNA or somebody at their senior center who is familiar with it and is able to help them gather that information. And then they communicate directly to Sydney when the grant has been approved and she can schedule the work and we go from there. Well, it certainly sounds like this is right in the ballpark with uh, what the Aging in Place Council is yeah. all about, allowing people so to stay in their send homes. Send that email. Send yeah. that email. Share so, that link. Beg people. That's yeah. what I do all day these days. Just <laughs> beg people to email their representative. I think it really can make a difference. And um, if this happens, and then thank you, Lotus. If this ha Lotus wants you to vote for it, um, if this happens and, and goes through, it will really make a difference for a lot of your customers and patients and, uh, and may mean the difference between them living at home safely for another year or two or having, you know, a real de big decision to make, which isn't the one that they want. I appreciate your time. I'm very I will for it. add a little piece to what Norma just said. Um, 
this past year with the, you know, obvious coronavirus pandemic, the state of Rhode Island was actually faced with the question of, can we keep this in our budget? Um, and a numerous amount of uh, referral companies down in Rhode Island that we have partnerships with, as well as every single one of our employees um, sat here and we wrote letters out to all of our representatives. And it, it made such a difference that they actually renewed it. Um, so definitely share that link and, and send it on out just so that the, uh, the most amount of people in um, the, the state of Massachusetts can be aware of it and, and advocate for it so that we can get the funding together for, for our elders. Thank you. Absolutely. Click the link and, and, and let your representative know, and we'll certainly uh, uh, promote this on our, our, uh, our social media and get the word out even more. So thank you so much for coming in and talking to us about that. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks. We're, Very nice to meet you guys and uh, have a great day. Please contact me at any time if you need any, um, any more information about it. We'll sign off now. Thank you.